Hi, I'm Kirsten Chick, author of Nutrition Brought to Life, and this podcast is a companion to the book. You can listen as you read Nutrition Brought to Life, or before as a kind of preview, or after you've finished the book as a refresher. Either way, I hope this helps you make some small changes that make a big difference in your life. Hello again and welcome to episode 18, which is based on chapter 18, Liver Whispering, from my book Nutrition Brought to Life. Your liver deserves all the love you can give it. It's such a workhorse and like a horse, it seems to respond better to whispering than to being kicked and whipped into action. This goes against the grain of many of the detox regimes you may have come across, but I truly believe that at least most of the time, we need to be gentle with our livers. In chapter 18, I reflect on how what we've learned about the liver and its functions match so beautifully what the ancient Chinese five elements describe. This oriental approach describes the liver as the planner, and indeed it does regulate a lot of your body's activity, including blood sugar, balancing hormones, processing and distribution of nutrients, processing of fat-soluble toxins, and a whole lot more. Unsurprisingly, it gets easily overloaded, especially in this modern, heavily polluted world. I hear a lot of people say that their liver must be okay as they don't drink much or any alcohol. But alcohol isn't the only thing that might be taxing your liver. The chemicals oozing from your furniture, carpets and the paint on your walls, the pollution in the air and water, the pesticides in your food, substances in your deodorant, makeup, moisturiser, shampoo, perfume, cleaning products, and household plastics, all these need to be processed by your liver before you can get rid of them. It's too much. As they're all fat soluble, what your liver can't deal with can then go on to overload your lymphatic system, which might make you feel sluggish, itchy, or inflamed, or be stored in fat cells around your body where they can have a hormone disruptive effect. So I'd strongly advise you to reduce your exposure to as many of these chemicals as you can. Organic food is a great idea, not just to reduce how many pesticides you eat, but also to reduce the crop spraying that adds to air and soil pollution. Not everyone has access to organic food, however, so you can only do what you can. If money is an issue but time isn't, maybe you could volunteer at a local community garden or allotment that shares the organic food it grows, or even get your own allotment. But one thing you can all do is maximise your intake of the nutrients your liver needs to process these toxins. The medical world often describes your body's ability to detoxify itself as something that just happens by itself. Well, it kind of does, but it needs to make whole families of enzymes and conjugates to do that. And it doesn't make them out of thin air. It needs a continuous supply of amino acids, magnesium, zinc, selenium, B vitamins, vitamin C, alpha lipoic acid, betaine, and many more nutrients. If you're lacking in any of these, your liver can't do its job of detoxification properly. Once those toxins are processed, they need to find their way out of your body. And naturally, your liver helps with this too. It produces a fluid called bile, which doubles up as transport out for your processed toxins and emulsify for the fats and oils you eat so you can digest them. Your gallbladder, if you have one, stores this bile till you eat some fat. Then it gets swished out into your small intestine taking the processed toxins with it, so you can later poo them out. Such an efficient setup. Certain foods really help with this bowel flow and are great to have, particularly with oily foods. These include artichokes, dark green leafy vegetables, dandelion root and coffee. Actually, dark green leafy vegetables are also what the Chinese five elements approach recommends for the liver. 
it associates liver energy with the color green. And it's interesting that these vegetables not only stimulate bar release, but also contain many of the nutrients your liver relies on. So include some watercress, rocket, cabbage, kale, spinach, broccoli, and spring greens in your diet and keep rotating them. Five Elements also talks about eating sour foods for the liver, such as lemons and limes. These would, of course, provide the vitamin C your liver needs. But remember, we talked about liver whispering rather than li liver whipping. <laughs> A hint of sour here and there will be enough to gently prod your liver into action. Juicing a whole lemon every day may be more like hitting it over the head with a hammer. Very occasionally that may be just what your liver needs, but on a daily basis, I would suggest you try toning it down a little. The lovely thing about whispering is that it enables you to listen at the same time. You can pay close attention to how your liver feels, what it likes, what it doesn't like, what it needs right now. From this approach, I have learned that my liver likes space. That means not too much food or too many different kinds of foods in one sitting, not too many supplements or herbs at the same time, and also space in my life, space to breathe, to think, to go on long walks. And it likes flow. It likes everything to be flowing around my body smoothly and it actually helps that to happen. If my liver is unhappy, I feel stuck, sluggish, and overloaded. So get to know your liver and practice some liver whispering over the next few months. Next time, I'll be focusing on balancing hormones, which your liver is also integral to. And the one after that is the final chapter, where I help you put everything together into a personal action plan. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening to the Nutrition Brought to Life podcast. There's also a Facebook group you can join called Nutrition Brought to Life podcast community, where you can share useful insights and recipes, ask questions and get more support on your nutrition journey. If you haven't read it yet, there's so much more in the book, Nutrition Brought to Life, as well as all the scientific references and some glorious pictures. And you can find out more about me at kirstenchick.com.